Over the last 10 years, Scottish football has been dominated by Celtic. I mean, they've won 9 out of the last 10 league titles. That's actually insane. But European football is a different story. They haven't won European silverware in over 50 years now. So today, we're going to change that. As I've become Celtic's brand new manager with the goal of winning them the Champions League. But it's not going to be as simple as that. I've taken Celtic and their biggest rivals ranges out of the Scottish Premiership and put them into the Premier League. Celtic have proved they can do it in Scotland, but now it's time to see if they can do it in England. So here is the starting 11 we've loaded into with Celtic, and this is no disrespect intended. I genuinely did not think it was this good. I mean, there's Kyogo Furuhashi, Carter Vickers, Callum McGregor, and of course, Kasper Schmeichel. Oh my god, he's almost 40. Not to mention players like Nicholas Kuhn, Dyson Maeda, and of course Ryo Hutate, who've all got quite a bit of potential in their locket. But with every positive comes a negative. Four of our players are currently over 30 years old, and I feel like it's my job with Celtic to make sure that that's not the case anymore. But we've only got 80 million to spend in Season 1. Bro, this is going to be difficult. I mean, yes, it's a decent team, don't get me wrong, but will they survive the Premier League? I'm not sure we will at the minute because as you go through the Premier League, I'm not seeing any teams that we are absolutely guaranteed to take six points away from this year. It's going to be an absolute struggle from start to finish this season is. But that's where I come in, guys. It's my job to make sure that this Celtic team not only survives in the Premier League, but thrives in it. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just start with the basics, with the tactics. I'm going custom with the 4-3-3 holding with a counter-attacking build-up play and balanced defensive approach with a pretty deep line. I mean, Maide, Furuhashi, and also Nicholas Kun have all got a lot of pace about them, so hopefully when we're hitting teams on the break, this will actually work. As for the player instructions, our front three are going to be up the pitch. Advance forward with Furuhashi with our wingers being inside forward. Tatata is going to be our playmaker with McGregor being our deep line playmaker and Bernard is going to be our box-to-box -box midfielder. Don't get me wrong, I don't know if this is actually going to work, but I feel like the counter-attacking style of play is our best shot to survive in our first year in the Prem, especially with only 18 mil to spend. But that does raise a question, doesn't it? Where do we actually put that 18 mil in? Because quite frankly, our front three are pretty decent. Our midfield's weak, but it's not that important that that's the best part of the pitch for season one. It should either go on our goalkeeper or our backline, because rule number one of the Premier League, if you don't have a good keeper or good defence or both, you're going to get annihilated. Now, call me crazy, guys, but I'm actually going to keep Kasper Schmeichel for one year. I mean, granted, he's almost 40, but he's 80 overall and if I'm not mistaken he's actually won the Premier League before with Leicester City so he's defo got the experience we need in between the sticks. So that just leaves our back line and I feel like a better sense about than scales will go a long way in keeping us in the Prem. But we do only have 18 mil remember so our options aren't actually amazing but there is one centre back that we could sign and in my opinion he's one of the greatest centre backs the Premier League has ever seen. You guessed it guys Harry freaking Maguire 31 years old now 80 overall, got tons of Premier League experience, and honestly, that's exactly what we need. Plus, he's one of the greatest defenders of all time, as I've just said. And after spending £10 million on the greatest of all time, that's our defence sorted out for Season 1. We only have two million to spend now, guys. His contract was absolutely mental, so we literally can't make any more business happen in season one. The only thing we can do are loan players out, and that's exactly what I'm doing with these five players here. I mean, I'm sending James Forrest out on loan just to get him out of the way of the team, but the rest of these guys, I've got a decent amount of potential in them, so hopefully when they come back, they'll come back a much better player. But this is how we are lined up going into season one. Am I nervous about this? A little bit, yes. I don't feel like 18 million was enough to help us survive the Premier League but you never know guys Rangers are also in the Premier League with us so maybe they'll help us survive but judging by the end of season stats I reckon we've done a little bit better than surviving I mean Furuhashi's killed it with 21 goal contributions 20 for our CDM McGregor 21 for Nicholas Kuhn and 11 for Maide good old Schmeichel is still holding up as well 77 overall at 38 what an absolute legend and on paper, guys, this team genuinely looks pretty damn decent. But the question is, how have we actually done in the Prem? We've absolutely smashed it. We are top eight in our first season in the Prem. How the hell have we pulled that off? 
Literally every single team around us, in my opinion, is actually better on paper than us, man. All I can say is it has to boil down to our tactics. We must have got them spot on. But fair play to Rangers. They also got it right this year, surviving as they finished 14th as well. We didn't do too bad in the FA Cup either. We did make it to round five, but bloody Huddersfield knocked us out. Come on, man. <laughs> Saying that, though, they did make the FA Cup final. They got annihilated, but they still made the FA Cup final. But we had a stinker in the Carabao Cup, man. Everton knocked us out in round two. But I am so proud of this team, man. They were right up against it this year, but they've surpassed all expectations. But to get us from seventh in the Premier League table to getting inside the top six, or maybe even the top four, there's a lot of work that we still need to do to this Celtic team. For example, next year, we need to be replacing Kasper Schmeichel. As legendary as he is, and as good as he's been this year, he won't be able to keep this going for one more year like we need him to. So for that reason, we are getting someone better next year. To be fair, though, I'm picking on Schmeichel the entire your team still needs a lot of improvement up and down the pitch. There's no position in that team as far as I'm concerned that's safe next year. And hopefully next year's budget will actually be much better considering what we've actually been able to do with Celtic in season one. But before we find out, if you're enjoying this video with Celtic in the Premier League, drop this vid a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. So guys, season two has just begun and we've got 47 million to spend this year, man. That's way better than just 18. And like I said last year, no position in this team is indeed safe however i have thought about it and i've narrowed it down to two positions i need to sort out the first one obviously being casper schmeichel i mean he's retiring at the end of the year that's all i need to say about that really but i'm sorry celtic fans greg taylor's time in the starting 11 is done he's a decent player don't get me wrong but if we are to take celtic to that next level we definitely need somebody better than him i mean granted our front three isn't amazing and neither is our midfield but our defense and keeper position are so much more important than them pair combined but whilst we've got 47 million guys, it's not exactly 147 million, is it? We've still got to be pretty smart with how we spend this. And that is exactly why I have just spent 3.2 million on goalkeeper Peter Galashi. Granted, he is 35 years old, but he's 83 rated. And I know I said at the start of this video, it was my job to get the old players out of this team and introduce more youth talent. But right now, he is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. But Jose Gaia is a bit more of a longer solution to that level left back role is 30 he's 82 rated i mean this guy is an absolute beast which is why he's playing for ac milan to begin with but he's not anymore as i've just spent 28.3 million to sign him on a three-year deal leaving us 7 million in total but we've got contracts to sort out we've got to sort the coaching system out i think that's our transfer window done for season two and don't get me wrong guys i know this team isn't exactly world class just yet but we are slowly but surely getting them to where we want them to be do i think we're going to finish in Inside the top eight like we did last year? Absolutely not. I do feel like last year was a one season wonder. However, if we are at least competitive, I won't be too fussed with that. But something tells me, looking at these stats, we've done better than last year. I mean, Furuhashi's got 30 goal contributions, 50 for Nicholas Kuhn, 11 and 1 for Maida, 9 and 5 for Paolo Bernardo, too. And you look at this team, guys, and obviously there's a lot of work that still needs due to, you, but for the most part, it is absolutely a contender to get top six football. But guys, we've been so many misled we just about scraped top 10 football and the worst thing is rangers actually finished above us oh my god that is unacceptable celtic fans i'm sorry that's insane you know i thought for sure from those stats we'd have actually done a little bit better than last year but apparently that's just not the case we didn't do well in the fa cup either newcastle knocked us out in round four in the bottle jobs knocked us out to the carabao cup yeah we're moving on we're moving swiftly on and we move on to the conference league and i thought we'd qualified for this i just wasn't too sure because obviously last year we did finish seventh but here we finished 16th in the league phase which means we're in the playoffs and we're through to the round of 16 after smashing bk hack in 6-1 on aggregate but fc michelin knock us out in the round of 16 5-3 bloody hell so even though the teams literally never looked better it's very clear that we've still got so much more work to do with celtic to get them to that next level and if that budget isn't on our side next year we may have to actually face the idea of selling one or two of our best players man I don't want to do it, but sometimes you got to do things that you don't want to do in career mode. Especially if that means jumping from 10th in the league to the top four, because sometimes all it takes is a couple of sales to make that happen. But guys, as season three arrives, we haven't been back by the board again, man. 54 mil is all we got to spend. Hang on a minute. Why is it saying 2 billion? Jesus, I wish we had that money. We'd have no issues in season three. Now, we can do quite a bit with 54 mil with this team, but I don't feel like it's enough to take Salty to that top six 
where I want them to be. So yes, guys, we will be looking at selling one or two, maybe three of our highest value players. The question is, who the freaking hell am I actually going to choose? I think Furuhashi is going to be one of them. You know, he's 31 years old now. He's worth 20 million. We could get about 25 for him. Maybe Rio Atorte as well. He's worth 18 million himself, 28 years old. And we've got Engels to go in a spot who's six years younger and only two ratings lower than him. I've also decided to sell Maguire, Callum McGregor, and also Greg Taylor. I mean, Maguire and McGregor, they're both 33, so that makes sense. As for Greg Taylor, we're not using him because of Gaia, so that kind of makes sense as well. And there we go. Almost everybody on that transfer list has been sold and sold for quite a bit of money as well. The only player we couldn't sell is the greatest defender of all time, Harry Maguire. I mean, the disrespect on this guy, it's just not good enough. But our budget is 141 million to spend now, guys. Now, that that kind of money I can definitely work with. I was looking at the team, a striker is in need. We definitely need a CDM, another centre back over Maguire, and a new goalkeeper over Galashi. Remember, he was only a short term solution to a long term problem. And you know what? I'll admit, I'm sort of doing the same thing again with the keeper role. Bryce Samba is the player I'm going to sign. He's 32, 83 overall, but with him being 32, that means we've got at least two or three years with him in between the sticks. And he was quite cheap as we only had to spend 80 and a half million on it. As the next position we're focusing on is that centre-back role where Ladislav Kretschy looks really good. 27, 81 overall. And if you look at his stats, 74 pace, 79 defending and 84 physicality, I reckon he'll do just fine alongside Cameron Carter-Vickers. And just like that, we signed him on a three-year deal for 31.6 million. And we've still got 85 million. Ladies and gents, we are swimming in money. Which is why I'm signing Florentino from Benfica, still in his mid-20s, 83 overall, and judging by his defensive and physical stats, he looks like a monster that can do a really good job in the middle of the park for us. And he only cost us 27 million to sign as well. And looking at the team now, guys, it is safe to say we are beginning to turn a corner with Celtic. We just need a better striker up top who's going to be as good as Furuhashi was and will be set for season three. Which is why I've just signed Adamola Lukman from Barcelona for 42.2 million. Only 28, 83 rated already and guys, if you actually look at his stats, 85 pace, 82 shooting and 87 dribbling, that's very similar to how Furuhashi's stats looked. And look at the state of this team now, man. We've only got two players under 80 overall in the entire squad. I feel like season three is legitimately going to be our best one yet now. I mean, we brought a better keeper in in Samba, improved our defence with Kretzi, improved our midfield with Florentino and brought in a very suitable replacement for Furuhashi. I'm expecting us to finish inside the top six this year, man. I I want us to get European football once again for season four, or at the very, very least finish higher than Rangers. But guys, we then need up doing both. We are top four in the Premier League. We've got Celtic back into European football. And unfortunately for Rangers, whilst we're thriving, they ain't surviving the Premier League. They are inside the bottom three. They're going down to the championship. We're still panting the FA Cup though, guys. Chelsea knocked us out in round three. But we did make the semis of the Carabao Cup. Liverpool battered us on aggregate 5-2. But looking at the team now, I absolutely maintain that making those sales earlier this year was the right choice. I reckon budget depending next year, we could actually do pretty damn well in the Champions League. And for his first season in the Prem, Lutman did pretty damn well. 24 and 8 for him, 14 and 7 for Nicholas Cunn, and 14 and 4 for Dyson Maide. I'm looking forward to season 4, guys. Our first season with Celtic in the Champions League. The problem is that we can't pull any punches in season 4's transfer window. Which means that weak links will indeed be replaced like Dyson Maide by a mile one of the weakest links in the team right now. Arn Engels is another one. He's only 80 overall himself. But once we replace both of these players, ladies and gents, Honestly, things are going to be looking very up for Celtic. But in season four, I am absolutely disappointed with the board. 67 million is all they've given us. We got to the Carabao Cup semis and we finished third in the Prem and that's all they can give us. Are you taking the mick? Now we can still replace Engels and Maeda with that kind of money, but the quality of play we'd get for replacing them pair won't be as good as I want them to be. Now Engels is only 23 years old, 80 overall. I reckon he's got a bit more left to give Celtic. So for one more season at the very least, he's safe in the starting 11. But my Maeda is almost 30 years old. I don't think he's got much left in the gas tank to give Celtic. He's going to be transfer list 
invested, I'm going to get as much money as possible for him and I'm going to add that to the budget. And hopefully that 67 mil will turn into about 80 or 90 million and with that money we're going to bring in a proper world class left winger. And there we go, he's gone to Newcastle for 21 and a half million. I'm thinking our budget's going to be looking a little bit better now. And it is guys, 88 million now to spend. Ladies and gentlemen, we can definitely make this money work. Because I've found a certain Jeremy Doc whose contract's running out, he's in his mid-twenties, 86 overall. I literally can't think of a better left winger to replace my Eden. And considering how good he is, we've just got the bargain of the century, only spending 54 million on him. Now that does leave us 26 million and I don't feel like we're in a position yet to just throw that money down the drain. Now we could go ahead with the original plan and replace Arn Engels, but honestly, I've actually convinced myself to give him another chance so he's staying put. However, we could improve Cameron Carter Vickers. I mean, he's almost 30, 82 rated. He's not got much left to give because I've seen his development plan, ladies and gents. And with him being worth 21 and a half million, if we are short of funds for his replacement, we could always throw him into the deal as well. But guys, I have found his perfect replacement, Sven Botman, 27, 85 overall and his contract's running out as well. It'll still cost between 34 and 43 million, but that's where Cameron Carter Vickers will come into play. So there's my offer, 20 mil and Cameron Carter Vickers. I don't know if he's going to go for this, but it's worth a shot, isn't it? I really do hope he does go for it though, because he... Oh, thank God for that. Shabby Alonso, you legend. And just like that, with the signing of Sven Botman, that's our transfer window done. And the improvement in this Celtic team is actually staggering, man. It's so much better than it was for years ago. And that's good for us as we are finally in the Champions League where I've accidentally over-simulated. We've already played one game against Juve, but we picked up a draw, which against them is pretty decent. But so far, it's a stinker start to the season, man. Four games played and we've only won one. Celtic, what are you playing at? But looking at this team, I'm not too worried about how we're going to do in the Premier League. I feel like top four is secure. It's just the Champions League I'm a bit worried about. And what did I tell you? Top four is indeed secure, ladies and gentlemen. You CL football's on its way to Celtic next year as well. But this is kind of crazy. I wanted to check to see how Rangers did in the championship. They only managed the playoffs, so next year they may or may not be joining us once again in the Prem. But look at this. We made the FA Cup final, just falling short to Chelsea in the end. Come on, man. We just fell short to winning our first trophy. And we once again made the semis of the Carabao Cup, but this time Man City battered us instead of Liverpool. But as for the Champions League, we actually qualified automatically to the knockouts. That's actually insane when you think about it. I mean, teams like City, AC Milan, Juve, Real Madrid didn't even qualify automatically. That's nuts, you know. But we qualified for the quarters, guys, as we beat AK Athens 4-3 on aggregate. And we're in the semis after beating Athletic Bilbao. We could be playing Juve, City or Roma. Oh my god, give me Roma. I can't freaking believe it. City knocked us out again with the exact same aggregate. Nah, that's a joke, man. That's actually embarrassing. But you know what? They didn't win it. Roma beat them 7-6 on penalty so there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel but i don't get how this team got battered by city twice in a row man i mean this team is freaking amazing and as well as that Adamola lutman's had a great campaign 37 goals 11 assists in 59 games not to mention bernardo Korn, doku and palmer having great campaigns as well Maybe for season five, we just focus on the weakest links in our starting 11, man. I'm not too sure our midfield needs sorting out, but there are other positions we could focus on. For example, Jose Guy, he's 33 years old now. He served his purpose. He's been a great left back for us, but right now, I do feel like it's time to replace him. And it sucks to say, but Johnston's time is up as well. It'll take him 24 weeks to become an 85 rated right back. And after that, it looks like his development plan has stopped. And it's the same story for Nicholas Cunn, and this really does break my up because I actually really like this guy in the team. This is of course all budget depending but if we do get the money to sort all this out we could be the next Champions League winners. Okay Celtic's board of directors are officially a joke. We've only got 80 million to spend. I mean need I remind you what we did last year. What more do we have to do to get more than 100 million in the budget? I mean there's no way with 80 million we're sorting all three of those positions out man. We're gonna have to sell a couple of players again. And this might surprise you but I'm only selling Gaia and Nicholas Kunk 
because I've checked all their development plans, those have stayed the same, but Johnston, on the other hand, is a bit different. He's actually still improving according to his development plan, seven weeks to become an 85 rated defender. I mean, I can't knock that, can I? But I could not Gaia in Cun, which is why I've sold them both. Cun's gone for 61.4 mil and Gaia for just under 29 million, giving us 168 million. Now, that's the kind of budget I actually expected Celtic to give us this season. And once we sort our fullback position and our right winger position out with absolute world class talent, I don't feel like there's any team in the world that can stop us winning that Champions League. Which is why I pulled no punches with our right winger position as I've just spent 73.5 million on Takfusa Kubo. 27 years old, 88 overall, could we have found anybody better to replace Nicholas Cut? And following him is Ferdi Kadioglu from Bayern, only 28 himself, 86 rated. Look at his stats, man, he's so good. And that's why I've just spent a further 70 million pounds to sign him on a four year deal. And looking at this starting team now, it's pretty hard to argue that this isn't one of the best teams in the world at this point. But we do have one problem, guys. Our bench isn't exactly filled with a lot of quality, is it? And if we are to do well in the Prem and UCL again, we've got to be replacing quality with quality. The problem is, guys, I've legitimately looked through this free agents list so much over the last 10 minutes. There's nobody here that's decent. And we've only got 13 million to spend. Honestly, at this point, I reckon we just take our chances. As we are in the Champions League once again, and to be fair, with a week team last year we made the semi-final so hopefully now that we strengthened all the weaknesses we should be able to get all the way to the final but not only do i want to win the champions league i want the premier league man it's not been the best start but last year wasn't either and we still finished third either way though guys with how we've got the team lined up for season number five this is our best shot yet at winning the premier league and the ucl guys i'm convinced ea have made it impossible to win the premier league man we are third in the league for the third season running Freaking Arsenal won the Premier League. If they can do it, bloody anybody can. But look at this. Man City lost to Blackburn Rovers in the FA Cup Final 3-1. Okay, it's official. Anything can happen in FC 25. As we lose to West Ham 1-0 in round three of the Carabao Cup. We just don't have much luck in these competitions, do we? But it's a good start in the Champions League. We go through automatically to the round of 16 after finishing eighth. And we beat Inter Milan in the round of 16. And we've beaten Marseille in the quarters. We could be playing after. Atletico, Leipzig or Chelsea. Honestly, Leipzig or Chelsea will do me. Do not give me Atletico. We got Leipzig and we're playing Atletico in the final. The strongest team out of the three, man. Come on, for God's sake, EA. But to be fair, it could be worse. We could be Rangers who've just about scraped promotion back into the Prem. But looking at Atletico's team, honestly, aside from it being five at the back, that is a very, very beatable side. Especially when our front three just score for fun layers in general. 30 and 10 for Lutman, 23 and 16 for Takfusa Kubo, 16 and 12 for Bernardo, and 11 and 3 for Doku. And this is the team, ladies and gents, in all of its glory heading into the UCL final. And if I do say so myself, we have done an incredible job with Celtic. We've even got three OGs in the team, guys Johnston, Engels, and of course Bernardo. That I'm actually really happy about. But one thing I'm not happy about is we haven't won a single trophy yet with Celtic, even though we've come so close on so many different occasions. Asians. But we now have the chance to change that, guys, as we are one win away from making Celtic the best team in the world. Here you come, Atletico, on the left-hand side of the pitch. Oh, they found Julian Alvarez. we got to defend quite nicely. Oh, they found it in behind. They've just routed the boost. That might have been offside, ladies and gents, but that is a warning. Atletico Madrid aren't messing around. As here come, Atletico, once again, on the left-hand side of the pitch. They're doing really well. Oh, look at that. What a tackle. Here comes Lutman on the ball. Okay, I see that run. Kubo is in behind. He's going to have to take this. For Why on freaking earth did you just head that? Are you totally stupid, Kubo? Bloody hell, the AI on this game is dumb as hell sometimes. Why would you not just wait for it to drop in at it with your right foot? Here we come with Engels, though. Look how big he is, by the way. Oh, my God. He could take it the entire... Oh, that pass was shocking. Alvarez is on the ball on the right side of the pitch. We need to close them down. Atletico have got a bit of room to run into. Koke's shot has been blocked. Oh, Atletico are in behind in that 
match 1-0 to them on the 40th minute. They take the lead. It's been deserved, I won't lie to you. They have been all over us. I mean, we haven't even a shot yet, really, have we? We need to buck our ideas up, man. We haven't come this far to lose to a five at the back. Freaking Atletico Madrid. Here we come, though, second off. Doku is making his way down the left-hand side. I tell you what, he's done really well. Oh, my God, Doku could go all the way. And he has straight from kickoff in the second off. Jeremy Doku equals the score line. What a solo goal that was. Oh, my God, Jeremy Doku, take a bow, lad. That is actually insane. He literally ran through the entire freaking defense and popped it into the back of the net. Go on, son. Well, there's the equalizer, ladies and gents. Now it's time for us to control this game and get the winner. And the man of the hour is on the ball once again. He's going to try and... Jesus Christ, Atletico aren't taking any chances again with him, are they? Bernardo's on the ball. Doku on the ball once again, though. Look at him. He's going to use his pace. Oh, my God. We can make this week if we... Oh, referee. Is that a handball? It is as well. We've got a penalty. This is the chance we are looking for. Upper Makarnu handballs it in. Oh, that's actually a handball. Dead and buried handball. Ladislav Kletschi to take the penalty as well. We are going to go top left bins. Please don't save it. No, he doesn't. We go 2-1 ahead in the UCL final. Oh my God, man. What a comeback. 1-0 down to 2-1 up. Get in. The comeback is complete, ladies and gents. No more silly errors at the back and this game is ours. But here they come. Damn oh my man. God. They aren't wasting any time. Oh my God. That's great defending. Kubo's on the ball now. Look at the room he's got to run into. He's even got time to put it on his left. Game over. Game done and dusted. 20 minutes to go. We take a two goal cushion lead. Considering Atletico are playing five at the back, I don't know what they're playing at. I mean, look at how much room he's got to run into there. This is ultimate, by the way, EA. And there's a good chance, guys, we can get a fourth goal here if we play our cards right. We dinked it into the box. Adam nope. Lutman's there. Good save. Three minutes to go. Atletico are coming down the left hand side. They're looking for a second goal for them, but I feel like it's too late for them, even if they do score. Good save. And that's it. Full time. Atletico were too late. We have beaten them 3 1 in the UCL final to make Celtic the world's best club. And we did it the hard way as well. No Scottish Premier League where Celtic are dominating. We put them into the Premier League where the old question is, can Celtic do it there? And lo and behold, they absolutely can. And whilst it's true we didn't win any other trophies, we won the biggest one you can win at club level with Celtic. And that is, of course, the Champions League. And that means my job with them is done. If you have enjoyed this video with Celtic in the Premier League, please leave this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And if you want to watch more content from me, just click this full movie that I did with Chelsea.